Thank you very much. Hola. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, boy, it smells like prime time in here, doesn't it? <laughs> Welcome to our uh, second annual Holiday Film Festival, and, and I hope everybody had a uh, very nice Thanksgiving yesterday. Of course, at the Letterman House, it's traditional, we have the, the swan dinner. Mmm, boy. <laughs> and it's, it's fun to watch the little kids fight over the neck. But you know, seriously, <laughs> uh, it's been said, ladies and gentlemen, that if you took all of the films ever made and stretched them out end to end, they would wrap around the earth, the globe, 60 times. Of course, in order to do this, you'd probably have to get some kind of a permit. <laughs> so, so we didn't, we didn't do that. Uh, you know, uh, in putting together our uh, holiday film festival, I came across a rather interesting statistic. Uh, according to Variety magazine now, 70% of all candy sold in motion picture theaters this past year were sold to Roger Ebert. Can you believe that? That seems like... Uh, let me tell you about the uh, program tonight. We have managed to do the impossible. We have assembled here six original films, none of which now are based on a Stephen King novel. Can you believe that? I... Thank you so much. Uh, the people who did our films for us tonight, we have Michael J. Fox, uh, also from 60 Minutes, Diane Sawyer, Jonathan Winters. Uh, we have a band video with uh, Paul and the band and featuring the lovely and the talented Terry Garr and also a film uh, by our uh, very own Chris Elliott. That didn't seem altogether spontaneous, did it? Well, <laughs> um, and now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you about uh, the feature film or the film that I'm featured in. And, and I think when you see this, this little film I've put together, you're going to see that uh, it contains a lot of really what I do best, and that is overact. Um, <laughs> Seriously, in the past, you know, I have been reluctant to talk about my romantic life on our regular show, but recently, I was involved in a relationship that affected me so strongly that I knew the only way to express how I felt was through my art. <laughs> the film you're about to see is one I had to make as a form of therapy, but I think there comes a time when we're all feeling in love. It looked like another boring Friday night. For months, Paul had been trying to set me up with the right girl. I never dreamed that tonight, she would walk into my life. A party for Schaefer? Hi, Wendy. Oh, hi, hi. Paul. Sorry, sorry we're late. Oh, I just got Listen, here. Listen, Dave, Dave. Uh, Wendy, this is Dave. And, uh, hi, Dave, David. This is Wendy. Oh, hey, me. it's Hal. Thank you. I should wonder what he's doing here. Who's Hal? Oh, that's Hal Gurney. He's the director of the show and one of Dave's closest friends. Come on. Hi, Hal. Having dinner alone? Dave? Oh, actually, I'm waiting for my wife. It's our 25th wedding anniversary. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. You know, uh, I, I don't think I ever met Mrs. Hal Gurney. Really? No. Here she is now. What a knockout. My feet are killing me. Pick this place. Dear, I don't think you've ever met Dave. No, I don't think you've ever met. The perfect Hello. woman, nobly planned, to warm, to comfort, and command. What was that, Dave? Wordsworth, uh, Ode to a Woman with a Rose. Oh, you must be interested in flowers. Has Hal talked to you about our garden? Uh, no, he hasn't. Uh, uh, let me join you for dinner and, and you can tell me about the garden. But Dave, what about Paul and your friend? Shut up, Hal. Aphids, red spiders, Japanese beetles, slugs, we had them all. The slugs got into the corn, not the golden bantam, but the butter corn. The corn turned out fine, though. But you know what I'm proudest of? My tomatoes. Oh, uh, please, please, tell me about the tomatoes. Dave's really interested well, in his gardening, isn't he? Figure out I've how. never seen him this way before. Mm -hmm. Well, the tomatoes came in bigger this year than ever before, and there wasn't a single slug on them. The only problem is I had to give most of them away because my husband won't eat anything with tomatoes in it. 
Your husband? Yes, hell. Oh. Right. Hal says he can't eat tomatoes because of his sensitive stomach, but I think he just doesn't like my cooking. Doesn't like your cooking? Doesn't like your cooking? And you, Hal Gertie? I better go talk to him. Waiter? Dave, what has gotten into you? What's the matter with you? Are you blind? Hal is no good for that woman. I love her. Love her? She's already married to Hal. They've been married 25 years. To me, they look pretty happy. Oh, yeah? Well, Hal Gurney does not have a monopoly on happiness. I want my share. And I'll tell you something else. I don't care what it takes. I'm going to make that woman mine. <laughs> and have acknowledged your consent before us. Now, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the laws of the state of New York, I pronounce you man or wife. You may kiss the bride. All right, I did it. I married Mrs. Hal Gurney. Yeah. Yeah, you did. But at what cost? By stealing Hal's wife, you have alienated everyone on the show. Why do you think that nobody came to your wedding? Paul, that's not true. Look, here's Biff Henderson, one of our stage managers. Hi, Biff. Dave, here's a little gift from everyone on the crew. <laughs> Look, I don't care what you people think. For once in my life, I'm happy. Come on, honey. Welcome to the uh, program. Boy, honey, we're got the show's on. I'm about to do something really funny. <laughs> You're not going to sleep through the honeymoon, are you? Come on, wake up. Yeah, look, see what I did here? I pretended like the joke didn't work, and then I made a really goofy face, and I got a huge laugh. That was pretty good, huh? <laughs> you know, now that you're my wife, you'll learn all the tricks that I use to make the show a big hit. Doesn't the director have a lot to do with it? Well, what is the deal? You've been talking about Hal all night. Just relax and watch the show, please. Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, I was married today to Mrs. Hal Gurney, who uh, divorced our director so she could run off with me. Uh, can, can we get a shot of Hal now in the control room? Hal. You know, I, I think we've seen enough. This is not going to work. I know what you're thinking. I should leave right now and go back to Hal. Oh, no. No, no. What I was thinking is, tomorrow when I get to work, I'll fire Hal. No. I think my idea is better. Goodbye, Dave. Oh, no. No, just... No, no. Please, no. After Mrs. Gurney left me, I couldn't get her out of my mind. I was a wreck. I felt like I would never laugh again. Then one day, I happened to pass a movie theater. I saw what was playing. Chaplin. City Lights. Good old Charlie. He was my idol. And he was there to cheer me up when I needed him most. I had to go in. Of course, I'd already seen City Lights, so I went to see what was playing in Cinema 2. It was Porky's Five. And let me tell you, I never laughed harder in my life. The movie put the world back in perspective for me. I felt good about myself again. I could go on living. We'll uh, be right back with Michael J. Fox after you take a look at this, folks. <laughs>